Welcome in, guys, to the 304 Podcast. I'm your host, Sam the Man, here along with my good friends, Mr. Marcus Dean, my buddy from Oklahoma. What's up, guys? What is going on tonight, fellas? Right here on Facebook, YouTube. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. We certainly love you folks, and we can't thank you, thank you, thank you enough for getting us over 1,000 subscribers. I'm so happy I could cry. And don't don't forget Marcus's OnlyFans account. Don't forget about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, go check that out. Send him money. Here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, guys, we're bringing McFly on tonight because we're going to do an Oklahoma deep dive, and everybody needs a McFly. So we've got him on here tonight to set us straight about Oklahoma. Um. Let's start off. Let's start off with McFly. The departure of he who shall not be named, Lincoln Riley, um, and Caleb Williams, and you know Spencer Rattler. You yeah. Know, to a to a normal fan like myself, a West Virginia fan, like I can't imagine. You know, we got rich rotted. You guys got rich rotted, but your team kind of got picked apart a little bit in the process. How does a fan base recover from that? Uh, by hiring someone that was uh, loyal to Oklahoma, uh, like Brent Venables. That was the only way to kind of like bridge any kind of gaps. Mm-hmm. Brent Venables is definitely the, the best hire they could do, seriously. And, and it made everything a whole lot better. It really did. Well, and I agree. I mean, I think there's nobody else that you could have hired that would have made everybody as happy. Um there's nobody that you could have hired that you would be that you feel like could take you into the SEC, yeah, uh, and and be prepared for that. Right. Um, Marcus, how important is it that that they that this move happened when it did, and Brent Vanables is the guy that's going to be leading them into the SEC? I mean, this is a home run hire in all every aspect of the game. I mean, you got to look. You know, he was a former um, uh, Oklahoma coach left. Went to Clemson for, I think, 12 years at Clemson, 12, 13 years at Clemson, then came back as head coach now. Uh, I mean, this is this is a home run. I mean, you can't script it any better. He's, he's going to need these couples a year, a couple years of recruiting before they hit the SEC. I don't know if they'll be in the East or if they'll be in the West. He'll need to be able to beef up recruiting in order to compete with, undoubtedly, the best division in college football, the SEC. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it is. I mean, nobody's – I don't think anybody could argue with that, and it'd be a good argument. The SEC is where it's at. West Virginia could get into the SEC. I'd be tickled pink if they left tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think Texas is going to have a little bit of a harder time making the adjustment. I, I think, think so Oklahoma um, would have under Lincoln Riley. I think that really this set them up for success. And uh, yeah. I think uh, the Sooner fans should be really excited – moving on into the SEC with, with the guys you have. There were several coaching changes that happened, Marcus. Now, who all who all came in that's that's going to help uh, Venables get, get everything under control? Well, originally, Brett Venables signed a six-year deal worth uh, $7 million a year, so he was handsomely paid, uh, which he should have. And he went out and got one of the best offensive coordinators in the country, in my opinion. He went out and got Jeff Levy from Ole Miss, uh, which was a which was a bang of power from getting him from underneath Lane Kiffin. They also brought in uh, a Ted Roof and a Todd Bates to run the uh, defense. Uh, if you recognize Todd Bates, he's also a Clemson man, coming with Brent Venables from Clemson uh, to run the defense. Um, and 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 all in all aspect, they brought a great and he put together a great uh, staff um, in terms of what he wants to do. He wants to build a nasty defense there at Oklahoma. Now, McFly, you talk a lot about Jeff Levy. You you've <laughs> mentioned him a lot to me. What kind of offense is he bringing in, and how's it going to be different than what you guys had under Lincoln? Yeah, so Lincoln uh, Lincoln had a high or a high powered offense. But it wasn't very fast paced, and there, there was nothing, nothing wrong with that as long as it worked. Mm-hmm. But before he brought Lincoln in, Baylor dominated OU every year, every year. And their OC, or at least their quarterback coach, was uh, Jeff Levy. And Jeff Levy also played offensive line in Oklahoma. So, so it was good of, or it was good of Brent to get the uh, best offensive mind available to go back home, to go back home. 
He's going to have high-powered offense. He's going to be very, very fast. So that's that's going to put a lot of strain on the defense. The defense is going to have to give up some yards because they're going to be on the field a whole lot more. And so it, I like it, uh, but uh, I think it's a perfect combination between the best defensive mind in football and, at least right now, the best offensive coordinator mind in football. Uh, I, I still believe Lincoln Riley is the best offensive mind in football. Granted, I don't want I don't want to don't want him back anymore. But Jeff Levy is a uh, is a good um, is a good alternative. Well, it seems, and, and I agree totally with you. I think Brent Venables and Jeff Levy together is going to create a monster. I really do. I do yeah. believe that. Yeah. I think I think OU is going to be a little down this year. I think it's going to it's probably going to be a pretty hard year for, for them. But I think you get through this first this first year. I think the sky's the limit because those two guys um, just, I think they complement each other in the way they do things so well that it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be magical for lack of better words. And I agree with that too. I mean, it's, it's going to take them a little while to get there. Uh, it's going to get, they're going to have to flush out the recruits, get their type of recruits, get their type of players. I mean, not the same. They, they've been doing a bang up job in recruiting, I mean, you look at recruiting, and they ended up eighth in the twenty-two in the twenty-two campaign. Uh, yep. They ended up second in the Big Twelve. Brought in thirty-six commits, and thirteen of those are transfers. I mean, my goodness! I mean, it looks like they're setting up to, to want to win now and not wait, which is a good thing. But the transfers they brought in was just a wide variety: offensive linemen, defensive linemen, wide receivers. I mean, they brought in a little bit of everybody to, I guess, how you would say, just to plug and play and, you know, hopefully, you know, create some magic this year. What's so impressive about, you know, being eighth in the country and second in the Big 12 is you lose, you know, a high-profile coach. Um, even though you brought in another high-profile coach, losing a high-profile coach, usually you see a dip. And right. really, you know, that's not really a dip. That's not that's that's a really good uh, – recruiting class already so it's only going to get better now one of the, the the standout transfers was dylan gabriel out of ucf mcfly tell me what are you guys seeing there from dylan gabriel and who who would you comparison him to um that maybe we've seen in oklahoma before i mean it's on it, it, it's very easy to compare him to baker mayfield uh, and, and I'm not saying he's gonna be the number one pick in the draft or anything like that. It's not gonna be the high, the Heisman or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not comparing that to him. Uh, but he, um, th- that's what we can compare him to. If we had to, if we had to repl- pl- or, or replace Caleb Williams with someone, Dylan Gabriel is not a very bad replacement. It's really not. Uh, granted, would love to have Jackson Dart or any, or anyone else to at least battle for this starting position in OU. But um, Dylan Gabriel, I mean, what, he, uh, oh, my gosh. Under Jeff Levy, I think, I'm pretty sure he, he threw for threw for uh, 30 touchdowns. Uh, I think only uh, tossed for uh, 14 uh, interceptions. So he no, he knows the Jeff Levy system. And actually, before he even uh, stepped on campus, they named him the starting, starting quarterback. Hmm. Huh. Well, that brings a good deal of comfort, you know, to, yeah. to Levy as well, because you're, you know, working with somebody you've worked with before, you know, their, what their capabilities are. Uh, so, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe Oklahoma won't be as down as, I, as I'm thinking they will be this year, but it's, it's going to be a different kind of year for Oklahoma. It's, it's just going to be, everything's going to be a little bit different, kind of like yeah. when Rich Rod left and, and uh, Dana Holgerson came in, how much of a difference it really was. There's going to be a difference. Um, the 2021 campaign saw Oklahoma go 11 and two, losing to uh, Baylor and Oklahoma State. Um, but then they had uh, a good showing in the Alamo Bowl over Oregon. Um, so, you know, I think kind of building off of last season. I mean, can they repeat and have another 11 win year, or you know, is it going to, the slide going to be more than that? In reality, looking at their schedule, and we'll get to that, your favorite part of the broadcast here in just a little bit, um, I think they have every way they have the talent to win 10 games or more, um, but it's going to be up 
to this whole offensive scheme and the defensive scheme to see if they can mesh in year one. Because, it, like you said, it's always tough for a new coach to come in, bring his system. They might drop a game or two to teams you wouldn't expect them to drop a game to, which there's a couple on their schedule, which we'll talk about in a little bit, who they could be a, a what we like to call a trap. But in reality, you look at it, I mean, I could see 10 wins. I could definitely see 10 wins. McFly, who are the standouts at Oklahoma now? I know – you know, I'm big on Marvin Mims. I know you are too, but who are some other guys that may be flying under the radar that people need to to, to keep an eye on when Oklahoma hits the field? Uh, I mean, uh, Eric, Gray, Eric Gray is one of them. Uh, I'm not going to point out Dylan Gabriel just because we know – we at least know what's expected of him. But uh, Eric Gray, running back, uh, he should have a very good year. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a true freshman that I want to point out. Uh, it, it most like, most likely will be his backup, Javante Barnes. Uh, out of Bishop Gorman, uh, where Tamarco Murray also also played, uh, that's I, I think that they're going to split carries eventually. Uh, but I think Jav- Javante Barnes is probably going to be the uh, our best back per se. I think he's going to be able to bo- or block, pass, catch, and run. Uh, but also, um, Cal transfer, uh, a right guard, uh, K- Cade Matwire. But um. Uh, yeah, the receivers uh, out, outside of uh, Mims, Theo Weiss. I, uh, Theo Weiss, I think he's going to have a very, very solid year. I don't think he'll bre- break 1,000 yards, uh, but I'll tell you this. I think he's going to have more touchdowns than Marvin Mims, though. You think he could be a red zone threat? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. He's a very good route runner. He won't burn you. He absolutely will not burn you, but he's a, he's a very good route runner. Well, and those are the guys in the NFL that that are thriving right now, really. You know, it used to be speedsters and go up and get the ball, but now it's route running, like really yeah. sharp route running. And um, I think that's going to start trickling down more into, into college ball even more. Uh, and you're going to start seeing guys like that really shine because those crisp route runners, man, they're it's hard. To, they're, they're fun to watch. They are so fun to watch. And they get open so quickly. And if you have a quarterback that can hit them in stride, I mean, you could just play pitch and catch the entire day. Entire and it, day. And it gives un, uh, or like very, I want to say, unathletic people, or like it gives like the less athletic people time to actually get out there and go. Because as long as you're running routes good, the fundamentals are good, you'll play. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, this is the three hundred four podcast here on. YouTube, if you haven't already hit that subscription button and leave comments down on the bottom, we like your comments. Now, my favorite part of the show <laughs> where we go through the schedule and we make fools of ourselves by making predictions that we will, at the end of the season, go back through and watch all these videos and we'll see how we did and we'll make a video about that too. So <laughs> I'm going to pull up Let's Oklahoma's schedule. See how See how crazy we were. I'm gonna pull up their schedule, and we'll start. I'll we'll, we'll start um, uh, here with UTEP on September the third, coming into number nine, Oklahoma. Um, no issues with that game there at all. No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, and then uh, Kent State comes in uh, to Oklahoma. No issues there. No. Nah. And then Oklahoma, in their first test of the the first real test of the season, goes on the road to Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Now, McFly, that that game is one that you specifically talked about a little bit uh, about it being a good game. What do you think will happen in that game? Kind of give me a breakdown of what you, what you're thinking with that game. Ah, yeah, well, I mean, oh, you hasn't played in Lincoln Lincoln in years, like they just haven't. And Nebraska has always had OU's number, always. Uh, but I mean, um, so now I mean, they basically traded uh, Adrian Martinez to Kansas State, mm-hmm. replaced right. him with Casey Thompson out, out of Texas, out of Texas. Which Casey Thompson, he's from Moore, Oklahoma, and one of my high school friends, little brothers. Uh, but um, I think that's going to be a very close game. Uh, but uh, that I think that's an OU loss. I think uh, I think OU loses. Oh. Oh, okay. What about you, Mark? Marcus? 
I agree. It's it's going to be a very close game. It's going to be in Lincoln. It's going to be a, probably going to be a big noon kick right there in Lincoln. Yeah. Um, it's going to be very good. But I think Oklahoma goes in and squeaks out a squeaks out a W in their in their first test. I, I agree with Marcus. I think I think it's going to be their first big test. I think they're going to be jazzed up for that game. Um, I think there's going to be you're really going to see the offense come alive in that game, probably more so than the first two. I think they go in and they squeak out a victory by, you know, maybe a field goal or something. Um, and what will be, you know, kind of a coming out for Oklahoma and what you're actually going to see out of them throughout the rest of the year. The next game, they follow that game up with another te- another big test, but it is at home. They bring in Kansas State. Ooh. I'll take that one first. Yeah. I'm really big on Kansas State this year. I think they're going to break hearts. Um, going into Norman is is rough uh, to go there and win, but I think Kansas State pulls it out this year. I think uh, they've got the quarterback. They've got the receivers. They're stacked on defense. They've got some really big standout players. Um, deep diving them and really looking at their roster, I was super impressed. Um, as I said, they're the sexiest – Non unsexy team in the Big yeah, Twelve. Uh, ugly. Um, I think. I think that they go into Norman and upset Oklahoma. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one because I think this is because Kansas State has always been Oklahoma's kryptonite. And uh, when Oklahoma is playing good and they're on on top of the world, they always drop a game they d- should not drop, and it's always yeah. usually to Kansas State um, or or TCU. Someone they should not drop, and this is one I think they do drop in a heartbreaker. I think this is going to be a field goal. Oh wow! <laughs> so I actually I, I think it's a I think it's a it's a, it's a W. Uh, I quite honestly I think they kind of win by at least three touchdowns. Oh, uh, it's it, I mean, Adrian Martinez again. He's in Kansas State, so he's playing OU again. Uh, but um, but I think. I think they'll. I think they'll get the W in, uh, and it, it'll be close for three quarters. Uh, but I think OU wins by three touchdowns at least. Wow, that is a bold prediction, sir. That's a bold one. That's a bold one. I like it. I like bold. Predictions. That's just basing it off the defense. I, I'm trusting Brent Venables to get the defense together, and I, I think he will. I think the defense will be a whole lot better than the better than the offense. Well, and I. You know that might. I mean, that might be one of those games that's just a a freaking defensive, it, like it a could be a super game. defensive game where you know it's you know a fourteen to seven kind of game. Yep. Uh, you know, fighting in the trenches. Um, that definitely for me is going to be a game that I will watch. Uh, that's yep. going to be a, a really good game. Um, then October the first, Oklahoma goes on the road to TCU. Um, a team that we haven't did a deep dive on, but maybe worthy of a deep dive. I think they're yeah. kind of, oh yeah, um, they're one of those teams that could sneak up on people. McFly, do you think that that Oklahoma has anything to fear from TCU? No, absolutely. Uh, I I believe in Sonny Dykes. I really do. I, th- I think I, I think Sonny will be a good coach there. Uh, we just uh, we took on a transfer from uh, TCU, uh, um, Tyler Guyton, and he was a former. <laughs> I think defensive tackle, I believe, or defensive end. Uh, but before he transferred, he switched over to the offensive line. So he transferred to OU, and um, yeah, I think he actually might end up being our best offensive lineman. I think he has the possibility of being a first-round talent. And well, at least that's what the talking heads around Norman are saying. He has the talent for it. Let's just see what he does with it. Uh, but, uh, but with TCU um, – I think that's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a very close game, and that could very well be a loss. I think OU wins by three at the most. Marcus, yeah, I'm going to be. I'm going to agree with uh, McFly on this one. I think this is going to be a close game, but I think OU wins by a touchdown. Um, and t- according to, you know, towards the end of the ball game, I think OU just squeaks by a, another hard test, and I think OU just squeaks by. I agree, even though I feel like TCU is going to be 
a sneaky P kind of team this year. I mean, they're really deep. They've got they've got some good talent. Their offensive line uh, is second to none. They, they've got some really good guys. Um, but I think you know I think the talent gap is still a little bit too wide. I think Oklahoma wins uh, pretty handedly in that game. So through uh, five games, guys, we're all in agreement uh, at, at four and one, which is good. Even though we we may not agree on the losses, we're in agreement on the, the records. Now, <laughs> October the eighth, Oklahoma welcomes in Texas. Marcus, what's going to happen? Well, this is going to be in the Cotton Bowl. And last year, we seen the coming out party of Caleb Williams broke the Longhorns' horns, let's just say, broke their horns, and um, and came in and did something that was un- unprecedented. Hmm. Um, this year, Oklahoma or Texas is going to be out for blood. I hate to say what I'm about to say, but I'm only going to say this under one condition. If Quinn Ewers is what we think he is if he is the second coming the ou will fall in the cotton bowl i agree all right oh you agree you i want agree. to add anything to that I, I agree with that state that last statement i agree with that uh but um according to uh, texas uh message boards and uh their reporters on there yours has not been Surprised they are impressing anyone. It's been yours, Hudson Card, battling out every day, which is good. Uh, but uh, yours is supposed to be this this next best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, there's a reason why he didn't win the job at, at, at Ohio State. Now, granted, he played behind a very good uh, quarterback, uh, but uh, yeah, he transferred back, transferred back down to uh, Texas. Yeah, but um, I uh, until uh, until Texas beats OU, man, I'm just I'm just not betting on Texas. I still think Texas is going to have a terrible year. Until they don't have a terrible year, I'm betting on them having a terrible year. <laughs> so I, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I like it. I think uh, yeah, I, I think OU wins um uh, by ten, two scores oh. at the most. And you know, I tend to agree with McFly. Um, I think, you know, I think it'll be a close game, but I think it's going to be that game where they come out and look like national champions. That's the game it's going to be. They're going to come out and they're going to throw the freaking kitchen sink at Texas. Um, I'm not a big believer in Steve Sarkeesian. Um, I think that the Heat will be outcoached and outplayed, uh, and it's going to show on the scoreboard. I think it's going to be a huge win for OU. Mm. Well, it looks like I'll be eating crow. You're going to be eating some longhorn. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Well, fo- that's good. <laughs> the following <laughs> week, the following week, you welcome in Kansas. Ooh. And we won't, we're not going to discuss that because you should beat Kansas. You're not going to yeah. pull a Texas. You're not going to go Texas on us this year. Almost beat OU last year. They did, but I think, uh, you know, I don't think they're going to go full Texas. No, you never no. go full Texas. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't see OU pulling a Texas. 58-7 to seven will be the final score. OU, OU definitely. I'm, I'm going to go 63-7 OU. Then Oklahoma goes on the road. Uh, I guess they have their bye week, and on the 29th, they go on the road mm-hmm. to Iowa State. Mm. Um. I'm not I'm not big on Iowa State at the moment. I felt like Matt Campbell has dipped the last couple of years and has not has not been turning out the talent. And you know, he should have done more with Brock Purdy than he did, I think. I think he was way I don't know what the deal was, but there was something to me that just never really looked right. I think that Oklahoma goes into Iowa State. I think Iowa State's gonna have a really big down year. I think it's gonna be a very disappointing year for them. I think Oklahoma State easily handles Iowa State. I, I agree with. I agree. I, then we get to the kind of the the heart of your schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, you welcome in as it is right now, November the fifth. You're bringing in number ten Baylor to Norman. 
Mm. In a game that, I mean, that could be a season-defining game. Um, Marcus, take that. Marcus, you take that one first. This, we've talked about this on our previous podcast with our Baylor Deep Dive. I think this is going to be one of those games. It's probably going to be the best game of the Big 12 this year. Uh, one of the I say one of the best games of the Big 12 this year. It should be an 8 o'clock ABC kickoff if all things go right. Uh, it's going to be a Norman. It should be a great game. Uh, why I think Oklahoma will play well in this game, but I do have them fall into Baylor in a close close game to Baylor at home uh, because I think Baylor, this, this is a little step ahead of Oklahoma um, at this time. McFly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is my, uh, this is my second loss on the, on the schedule, for, schedule for OU. Yeah. I think Baylor wins uh, in Norman. Uh, it all just, perfectly, it all just depends on if the offense clicks for OU. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I think I, I I think Baylor wins by by a touchdown, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I wholeheartedly agree that Baylor right now is more talented or in better coach at least right now. Right now, yeah, yeah this right now, this by a slim margin, not you know not by much. Yeah, I well, think I, I, takes it. Well, and I think Baylor's experience from last year, they're returning a lot. Um, Their defense. You know, I think I, I think yeah, I think their defense is going to be good. I've got that in the loss column for Oklahoma as well. Um, I think it's going to be a great game, but I, I think that Baylor's. I'm big on Baylor this year, and and you know I think I think they just they're just going to eke it out. And then Oklahoma, November the twelfth, goes onto the road to play in one of the hardest places in the country to play, Morgantown, West Virginia, to take on my Mountaineers. So I'll take this one first. Guys, this is the year. This is it. This is the year. It's going to happen. Finally. Finally. West Virginia is going to beat Oklahoma. And I I believe that just because they're coming off the Baylor game, it's going to be a tough game, even if Oklahoma would beat Baylor. They're going to be coming out of a really rough game, traveling to Morgantown, Hostile territory. Depending on how Neil Brown's season's going at West Virginia, that may be a must-win game to stay off the hot seat. I think the Mountaineers get their shit together and finally beat Oklahoma. (laughs) Wow. That (laughs) is a very, very bold pick. And you know what? I hate to say this, but I'm going to agree with you because if West Virginia were to ever beat Oklahoma, they've yet to beat Oklahoma and since they've joined the Big 12. Mm-hmm. If JT Daniels is expected to play well, if he stays healthy, if there's a lot of ifs, if he a stays healthy, if West Virginia has a, a, a good season going, which West Virginia should win between six and eight ball games. That would be a good season for West Virginia with the schedule they have. Um, I can see I can see Oklahoma winning, but I can also see what Oklahoma losing. But in my heart of hearts, I'm going to pick with my brain this time. I'm going to pick West Virginia to upset Oklahoma in Morgantown because – those rowdy fans, it's going to be cold as hell in Morgantown. Could be snowing. Who knows? But I think this is this is the year for West Virginia to get Oklahoma. They have to get Oklahoma this year because after Oklahoma reloads and Brent Venables figures this whole head coaching thing out, watch out. Nah, yeah, I, I, now I tell us why we're stupid. <laughs> yeah, tell, yeah tell, I'm ready, McClough. Hit me. Uh, no, I, 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 quite honestly, I think uh, no, you wins by uh, two touchdowns. Oh, 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 I, oh. And, I, and the reason behind it is because I trust the fact that Dylan Gabriel uh, knows the offense, and uh, as long as Dylan Gabriel is playing, I think 
I, I think we have a chance of beating anyone in the Big 12. Uh, now, if he's hurt or injured, then of course, then that changes everything. But he knows the offense. He's been a an, he, he's been a second offensive coordinator for this whole entire offense. This whole entire or since the offseason started, since Jeff Levy got hired, he's been the second offensive coordinator just because he knows the offense. He knows Jeff Levy's uh, plays, so he's been teaching it to the players and to the receivers, the offensive line. Uh, while the uh, while Jeff Levy and the coaches weren't allowed to be in contact with the players. Uh, but um, I've done no, yeah, I, yeah, uh, I'm on the complete opposite end of you guys. I, I think uh, I think OU wins. Uh, uh, I don't think they dominate by any means, but I think they win comfortably. I think they win by uh, two scores. But but if but if there's any time, if there if there's ever time, this is the year for West Virginia to, yeah. to be. This is definitely the oh, year. This 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 is it. This is it. Well, this is- I, I'm thinking I'm thinking this is the star stars align year. Where yeah. it's just it hasn't happened, and I really think breaking out West Virginia schedule, I'm not going to do that. But I think this game in particular could be Neil Brown's. It, it could be very back. important for Neil Brown. Um, yeah, you know, because starting off the season the way the Mountaineers are, that's kind of where I'm thinking with it. But I can totally see your side of it too. Um, lot like you said, Marcus. Lots of ifs in that game. Oh yeah. On November the 19th, one of the best traditions in college football, Bedlam. Bedlam. McFly, why is this game so important and who's going to win? All right, well, the biggest reason why it's so important is because uh, my fiance and her family, they're uh, OS Pooh fans. So, <laughs> it's, so that's why it's very important to us. Uh, but um, I, know, I mean, it's it, it's it, it's a very fun game. It's a very fun game to end the season on, which we're now we're not in the season on anymore. Uh, but uh, it's 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 fun to look forward to. It it really is. Uh, it's it gives Oklahoma people a reason to talk crap to each other for a little bit, and then after that, then finally the OSU fans, once they stop blaming the refs and everyone else, they finally go ahead and accept their loss every year. Uh, but uh, no, last year, last year was a very good game. And it's crazy. Lincoln Riley was definitely checked out of that game mentally. Yep. And OU almost won. And and yeah. and, 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 and and there's no such thing as moral victories whatsoever. There's there's not. Uh, but they were they were right there. I mean, they were right there. If he had not accepted that USC job, he accepted it definitely beforehand. He definitely did. And that's why he took Caleb Williams home. He was recruiting for him, or he was recruiting him to go to go back to or to go to USC. Uh, but anyway, but um, I think uh, OSU they they should have a good year. Uh, you got Spencer Sanders turning, and also I think he's a uh, who I think he's the, uh, the the worst best quarterback in the Big Twelve. If that makes any sense? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think he's uh, seriously. I think he's Landry Jones. Landry Jones at of OU. He, like he he was awesome, but he's he would, he was also terrible at the same time, uh, and that's how I see Spencer Sanders. Um, but right now he is uh, the best quarterback in the Big Twelve right now. Uh, but uh, no, I, I see OU winning. It's a rivalry p- being played in Norman. No matter how the year goes for OU, let's say they lose every game up until that year or up, up, up until that week, the fans are going to show up. It's going to be hype. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. And, uh, yeah, I think OU pulls it out. I don't think they dominate by any means whatsoever. I think it's a I, – I, I think it's an overtime game, and that would be fun. I'd love it. I'd love for it to be an overtime game. I think uh, OU wins uh, by a, a single score in overtime. Well, and I kind of stand on the opposite side. I think, you know, you know, from, from my predictions, you know, they're going to lose to Baylor. They're going to go to West Virginia and – then they're going to come back at home and play Bedlam, and it's just not – it's going to be a mix of three games that's hard – that's just really hard to win all three of them. It's a rough um, if they If they go and beat West Virginia, you know, if they lose to Baylor, beat West Virginia, I still think Oklahoma State is going to take Bedlam this year. I think that, again, the stars are in alignment. I'm, mm-hmm. big, I'm big on Baylor, but I'm also big on Oklahoma State. I think, uh, you know – I think this is their year. I think I think they're I think they're just gonna pull it out. Dude, they were this they were this close to winning the Big I mean, Twelve. Yeah. Literally this, that close. And, and that's insane. It's so insane. 
So like, I'm in agreement, and uh, it, I don't think OU right now should be ranked ahead of OSU or Baylor right now. Definitely, yeah, they, not at all. They not should, at all. They shouldn't be. But hey, we all know logo matters. So that's why the logo and the brand that matters. So that's why they. That's, that's literally the only reason why they're ahead of OSU and Baylor. All right, Marcus. I've got them. I've got them losing. McFly's got them winning. Where you got them? Uh, well, and uh, folks have watched our bedlam pick from the Ohio from the Ohio. Shoot, no, Oklahoma State. Oh, good gosh, I'm terrible, 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 terrible. But anywho, uh, I picked Oklahoma State originally, but after thinking and after doing a deep dive here, I'm going to switch my pick. I'm going to go OU in this one by a field goal, and the reason being is because I think OU's defense by this time of the season. OU would do something, cause a fumble, cause interception, something that causes the, the game to flip into OU's favor and win by one to three points. Mm. You flip flopper. I'm, pr- I'm so proud. <laughs> I love you, Paul, you. You convinced him. You convinced him. And then Oklahoma goes on the road for their last game of the season at Texas Tech. Um, you know, Oklahoma's not West Virginia. West Virginia can't seem to beat Texas Tech for anything. So, Oklahoma goes into Texas Tech. I think they beat Texas Tech handedly yeah. to finish their season off with a big W. Yeah, uh, I agree. They, they cruise in that game. Let's just say, hypothetically, if OSU, the, the OU-OSU game, the Bedlam game, was earlier in the season and they played Texas Tech right after, no matter what, if OSU would have beaten OU or vice versa, or the same way, then I I, I think that would be a, a, a very big trap game. It would be a very big right. trap game. Yeah, it's the last game of the season. It's, uh, uh, the, hey, actually, oh, no, this is going to be in. So Bedlam's going to be senior night. Uh, no, this is going to be the last game, uh, at least la- last regular season game. Uh, so, uh, yeah, definitely. It's going to be – it's not going to be a game at all whatsoever. So, guys, what we have is we have McFly at 10-2, and two, mm-hmm. Marcus at 9-3, and three, and Sam the man at eight and four. So going from eight and four to ten and two, as an Oklahoma fan, if you if you finished eight and four, how would you feel? Oh man, I'd be disappointed to be honest. And just because I mean expectations are always high here. Uh, I mean, no, no matter what the situation is, uh, but I think eight and four in Britt Venables' first year would be. I think I, th- I think it'd be manageable uh, from the fans. Uh, we, we wouldn't be happy with it by any means, but uh, I think it'd be manageable. Uh, but man, the, it just we have a lot of talent returning. I mean, we have I mean, we have nine or, or, or I'm sorry, no, eight starters returning on offense. Uh, so the offense is all just solely based on Dylan Gabriel right now, and we haven't seen him play in his Sooner uniform besides the spring game. And so it's all just solely based off of that. But um, eight and four. It'd be very. I, I I think that's the absolute floor, definitely. Uh, but uh, I think ten and two is quite honestly easily doable. Uh, it's 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 easily doable. But eight and four, I think uh, OU fans would manage it definitely. I agree. You know, I think uh, you know I went out on a limb with a couple of games, and I like I like to do that. You know, like West Virginia. You know, that's. Like we said, lots of questions about that game, but yeah, you know, eight and four when you've had all the changes that you've had is is very. I think it's very good, especially with the climate in the Big Twelve right now. Because you know, Baylor is way up, Oklahoma State is way up, Kansas State mm-hmm. is way up, mm-hmm. and going eight and four when you go through everything that Oklahoma's gone through with everybody else being way up is pretty damn good. Yeah. Um. You know, Marcus nine and three. I think that's more realistic. I think I think you know I like all of our picks, even though we didn't agree yeah. on all of them. Just yeah. because you know it shows you that we're not too far off base uh, as a, as a, as football fans. Yeah, just separated by two games. Yeah, and you got to look at it too. If 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 they end up nine and three, which is a respectable ending, a uh, respectable year for a first year head coach, and it gives him the option to go and win that tenth game in the bowl game. Yeah, uh, I think and, the, the biggest thing with me is that uh, uh, OU has lacked uh, discipline uh, on both sides of the ball. 
uh, for the, or since Lincoln took over the head coaching job. And uh, so, and Brent Venables is definitely not going to stand for any kind of no. lack of discipline. So I think it gives me a little bit more hope uh, to uh, to at least be better this year. Uh, I do think the defense is actually going to be better than the offense. And I don't know if that's scary or if that's awesome because OU's defense has never been good. I mean, I won't say never. Definitely. Don't say never. Uh, but uh, not since Venables left. OU's defense has not been great at all. By any not, not under Lincoln Rally. They wasn't very, well, I mean, very, uh, very great. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, it's going to be such a different year for Oklahoma fans. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm excited to watch Oklahoma this year. You know, as much as it sucks to see these teams lose their coaches and everything and get flip-flopped upside down, it also is a chance to see what your team really is and where mm-hmm. your program really is. Yeah. And OU has been one of the best programs in the country for so long that this little mix-up is going to really show you where the cream is for o- Oklahoma. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And if it rises to the top, then, you know, the naysayers are going to have to take a step back and say, okay, you know, you know, no, no more of the, you know, not giving you guys the, the, um, the accolades you deserve, because I mean, the big 12 gets crapped on Oklahoma really don't get the love that they deserve. When mm-hmm. you look at, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio uh, state. It, 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 that's rightfully so though. Well, it is, but at the same time, if you can go through all of this and come out with a 10-win season, yeah. I mean, the, the naysayers are going to have to take a step they're, back. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to. They're going to have to tip their hats to that one. So, oh, yeah. you know, I think I, that excites me to think that that could happen because, I, you know, I like to see these guys eat, eat a little crow, you know, especially, you know, the, the only time you guys have gotten love, uh, you know, a lot of love, I think, is in the – Pre, pre rankings this year, yeah, being ranked ranked ahead of Baylor and Oklahoma State, but I think that was probably maliciously done um, because they don't do it any other time. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, I, I think it one thousand percent has to do with logo. OU has OU is a big brand that's way bigger than OU or OSU than and Baylor. Yeah, I think it has one thousand percent to do with that. Well, guys, this has been the deep dive on the Oklahoma Sooners. I want to thank Marcus Dean and McFly for coming on tonight and talking a little Oklahoma football. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments down below. Tell us why we're wrong. Tell us why we're right. Tell us what you think about Oklahoma. But I'm Sam the Man. You guys, we're going to sign off for the night. Everybody have a good evening. Three or four guys out. Nope.